Brokerage can be one of the most lucrative career paths within commercial real estate, but there are a lot of different options to choose from within this part of the business. Each of these will give you different day-to-day -day experiences, different skill sets, and ultimately different exit opportunities if and when you're ready to move on from brokerage, so deciding on the right path to pursue upfront is really important. And to make sure you know what you're getting yourself into in each part of this sector of the industry, in this video, I want to break down three of the most popular career paths that people take when working in real estate brokerage and the upsides and the potential downsides associated with each of these options. So the first path I want to talk through is probably the most popular among all of these, and this is investment sales. Investment sales roles will involve you in the marketing of commercial properties for sale, and there are really two distinct paths that you could follow when going this route. The first path is going directly into a pure sales role, typically coming with a title like brokerage associate, where your pay will be entirely based on commissions and your main focus will be on generating new business. The positives of stepping into one of these roles immediately are that you'll tend to learn a lot about deal sourcing and sales in a very short period of time. You have no limit on your earnings from day one on the job, and you'll typically also have a lot more control over your day-to-day -day schedule than you would have in a more analytical role. However, some of the main downsides of jumping into one of these roles directly are that you'll generally see very little or no analytical training at all. You'll often be working only on smaller deals owned by individuals or local operators. And even though there is no cap on your income from day one, it can often take 18 to 24 months or more just to make your first meaningful commission. These types of jobs tend to be a great fit for someone who considers themselves a natural salesperson, someone who has relatively few financial responsibilities when they start out in their career, and someone who's willing to work really hard for very little pay for the potential of big rewards later on down the line. Now for people who want to work on bigger transactions and work with major institutions and private equity firms and also want to learn more about the real estate investment analysis and valuation process overall, working as an investment sales analyst is going to be a much better fit. These types of roles will typically have you working on major purchase and sale transactions between institutions. You'll be digging into the weeds of property underwriting and valuation, and you'll primarily be supporting producers by creating broker opinion of value presentations, offering memorandums, and providing due diligence support for buyers to get deals done. These types of roles also almost always come with a base salary since you're not going to be the one directly responsible for generating new business and you'll also usually receive a pretty sizable bonus on top of that that can often be 50 to 100% or more of that base salary depending on the production levels of the team you're working for. Now, some of the main downsides of these roles are that you'll typically see really long work weeks, especially when you're working in major gateway markets like New York or LA, and you won't be directly in control of your income at the start of your career, but these jobs also provide some of the best exit opportunities in the industry, whether you wanna go and work for a client in acquisitions or ultimately strike out on your own and start your own firm. Now, if investment sales isn't the route you wanna take, another option to consider within commercial real estate brokerage is debt and equity placement. Similar to investment sales roles, entry-level jobs in this part of the industry also break down into deal sourcing and analytical roles, with each of these having very similar pros and cons to investment sales options. Pure deal sourcing positions will typically come with a title like junior loan officer or junior loan producer, and these are also focused almost exclusively on originating new loans and generating new business with very little analysis of the real estate involved. People who tend to do well in these jobs tend to be great natural salespeople, but they also often enjoy following the financial markets and where rates are going, and they also take pride in finding the best options for clients when financing their deals. Now, again, the main downsides of these types of jobs are that these roles don't tend to expose you much or at all to the analytics or how commercial real estate is often valued by equity investors, which are both things that can make it more difficult to transition onto the principal side of the industry in the future if you want to work in acquisitions or to start your own investment firm and raise capital from partners. And if you do want to dig more into the analytics, debt and equity placement analysts
analyst jobs could be a much better fit, which will often get you involved with bigger deals on behalf of bigger clients, and not only on loan sourcing directly, but also the process of raising equity to capitalize individual deals or even entire funds. These roles are really unique because they give you an inside look into the real estate capital markets and what both lenders and equity partners are looking for when making investments in commercial real estate, which can be extremely valuable, especially if you're planning to raise capital to do your own deals in the future. Now, these types of roles will also usually come with a base salary, and these are often only available at some of the biggest brokerage firms in the industry that work with clients that raise tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars to capitalize a single transaction. But because of this, the pay in these types of roles can be significant with bonus packages that can also come in at 50 to 100% or more of that scheduled base pay. And if you're worried about income stability when working in commercial real estate brokerage, another big benefit of going this route is that properties tend to be financed significantly more frequently than they're sold. So while a property might only trade hands between investors once every 10 years or so, that same property will very likely be financed two times or more during that same period, which tends to create smaller peaks and valleys in income than you might see when working in investment sales. Now, the last part of brokerage I want to mention here is very different from both investment sales and debt and equity placement, and this is leasing. Leasing brokerage involves the process of finding available space for tenants and then negotiating leases on behalf of those tenants or finding tenants on behalf of a property owner and helping that landlord negotiate the terms of a lease. And by working in leasing, you can learn a lot about the ins and outs of commercial leases themselves that you likely wouldn't pick up in a debt and equity placement or even investment sales analyst role. And this can also teach you a lot about what tenants are looking for when occupying commercial space. This can be really helpful knowledge to have if you want to transition into a role in asset management in the future working directly for a property owner, or if you're planning to make your own investments in commercial properties and plan to manage those deals yourself. Pay levels in this part of the industry can also be huge since leasing commissions are generally based on the total contractual base rent over the entire lease term, meaning that if you're working on a deal where the tenant is going to pay the property owner $1 million per year over a 10-year lease term and your commission percentage is 4%, that's a $400,000 commission check that's almost always going to be paid up front. Now, the main downside of working in commercial leasing is that similar to pure production roles in investment sales and debt and equity placement, you really aren't going to learn much about property valuation and investment analysis overall, which can leave some pretty big gaps in your skill set if your goal is to go out on your own or transition into an acquisitions role in the future. This career path also usually doesn't even come with the option to start out in a salaried analyst role, which means that you'll almost always start with some sort of a draw or a pure 100% commission-based compensation package from day one, which can also make things difficult in your first few years in the business. But with all of that said, if you genuinely enjoy building relationships and you see yourself as a natural connector, and you're also not interested in commercial real estate investment analysis at all, becoming a top leasing broker can be an extremely lucrative career path and can provide you a lot of autonomy later on in your career. Ultimately, there are a lot of different ways you could go in brokerage, but these are three of the most popular career paths and some things to think about if you are considering going this route. And if you want to make sure you have the skills you'll need to land an analyst role at a top commercial real estate brokerage firm, make sure to check out our all-in-one membership training platform, Breaking a CRE Academy. A membership to the Academy will give you instant access to over 120 hours of video training on real estate financial modeling and analysis. You'll get access to hundreds of practice Excel interview exam questions, sample acquisition case studies, and you'll also get access to the Break into CRE Analyst Certification Exam, which covers topics like real estate pro forma and development modeling, commercial real estate lease modeling, equity waterfall modeling, and many other real estate financial analysis concepts that will help you prove to employers that you have what it takes to tackle the responsibilities of an analyst 
analyst or associate at a top real estate firm. And if you like this video and want to see more content on the channel on different real estate career paths, make sure to hit the like button and let me know. And let me know in the comments which of these three paths you're most interested in and what drew you to brokerage in the first place. As always, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more videos like this every single week. And I'll see you in the next video.